Yo, what's going on, everybody, man? I hope all of you having a awesome day, had a safe New Year's. Uh, but let, let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. Uh, this topic, man, real quick. Not going to make this too long. Uh, I want to talk about this thing of uh, false conversions, right? False converts, and also not falling into the trap, right? The whirlpool of emotionalism when it comes down to churches, right? And I was listening to uh, Brother Corey, right, uh, who was on a Smart Christian channel, man. Shout out to him. And also Sister April. I can't remember her last name, but her name was uh, Sister April. And she was talking about a little bit of Mar about Marcus Rogers, not too much, but really on his followers. And how, how really you can tell that his followers are either babes in Christ or they're biblically illiterate, okay? And when you have people who are biblically illiterate like just completely oblivious to the scriptures you have to ask yourself are they truly saved and for many of his followers they're not saved and it's not to judge them or condemn them right but it's it's one thing to like really not know scripture okay and you're constant and you're learning okay but it's another thing to have these outrageous beliefs uh, pertaining to the essential, you know, the essential core of our faith, right? The deity of Christ saved by grace through faith, not of works, like those type of things. Those, those things are simple, right? We should know about, uh, justification, um, uh, sanctification, glorification, all those type of things, right? These are things that we should, uh, we should know about. And it seems that many of his followers don't understand even the basics of the Christian faith and the basics of the doctrine. Okay. And that gets to like my point is with me, uh, I know I grew up in church, but I really got back into church in my lower 20s and I went to a non-denominational uh, Pentecostal. Right. So like I did in my other video talking about the speaking in tongues, slain in the spirit, drunk in the spirit, people falling out like that was me. Right. I was a catcher. As I did in my set in my other video, I was a catcher. And the concern is that when you talk about the charismatic church, right? The charismatic, uh, those who are all about emotionalism and signs of wonders. Uh, the gospel is not truly being preached. The true, the gospel, excuse me, the gospel isn't truly being preached, right? And this is where it comes into is that when you have people who have some type of uh, understanding, right? Some type of concept of Jesus because they heard about him, right? Or maybe they grew up in church and they went away and, and whatnot. Or you have people who uh, really don't know much about Christ at all, but they came to the church. And when they come in, believe me, because I've seen it, uh, they see the hollering and the screaming and the laying hands and speaking in these so-called tongues and people falling out and spitting and slobbing and screaming. And uh, so there to them, they think, oh, a demon is being casted out and all these things. And it's a lot of emotionalism, a lot of emotionalism, right? Uh, those who have grew up in that type of background as a uh, as a Christian, right? Early in your walks, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, then you have the music playing and the, the musician plays a certain string to a certain song that, that tugs on the heart. They get you to cry. They get you into this emotional frenzy to where the pastor lays hands on you. He puts his hands on your stomach, on your head, on your shoulder and they, and all these type of things. And, and it it gets you in your emotions it gets you into your feelings, right? So the person who first shows up to this church, they see all these things going on and they think that, oh, this is the power of God. They think it's the power of God being demonstrated, but yet the gospel has not been preached. The gospel of Jesus Christ has not been preached. The, the, the cross has not been preached, not one time, right? So the person who is sitting back, they're seeing all this, they don't know any better. So when the pastor says, hey, would anybody like to come and give their life to Jesus Christ? This individual walks up and say they want to give their life to Christ. But how can an individual give their life to Jesus Christ, the Messiah, when the gospel has not been preached? How does somebody get saved when they don't know the condition that they're in? I cannot go to a doctor's office and a doctor gives me some type of medication without him giving me a diagnosis of what my condition is in my body. Okay, this is what type of medicine you need. This many, uh, this many pills a day. Eat this with food or with water. Don't take it on the empty stomach, right? You need instructions. So when it comes down to it, for a person to come to Jesus Christ to receive salvation, 
and believe on his name, they have to be told their diagnosis or diagnosis, whatever. They have to be told what their condition is, that you're a sinner in need of a savior, right? Not only do you need to be saved, but understand what do you need to be saved from? So what happens? They go up to the altar. Oh, I love, gee, I, I confess Jesus as my Lord and savior without hearing the gospel. They say that they believed on Jesus, but without the gospel being preached, there is no salvation. What is the great commission? To go out into the world and preach the gospel, right? So what happens is, is that a person didn't get saved because they preached the God. They didn't even get saved. They thought they got saved, you know, but what happens is, is that there was a false conversion because of a uh, emotional high, right? An emotional high of some type of emotional euphoria, right? Because like I said, I grew up in these type of churches that when people come into these churches, they come in emotional. They come in emotional. They come in broken. They come in looking for hope. They come in looking for help, which isn't wrong. That's why people should come to church, right? To get around people who can embrace them and show them the love of Jesus Christ. The problem is they came in and saw emo they were all they were already emotional enough as it is. And now they come in and our people are touching them and laying hands on them and all this and all that. And they're crying, they're screaming and hollering, and they feel like this weight just fell off of them. They feel free. They feel liberated. They feel amazing, but yet uh, no gospel was preached, but yet they didn't get saved, but yet there was no true repentance in the heart to turn away from sin because they weren't told about their sinful condition to turn to Christ. You understand? So then when things get bad in life, when things get ugly, when trials and tribulations come, they end up leaving the faith. They were never of the faith, but they ended up leaving the church because they were never told the gospel. They were never told the truth. So they're told, you know, hey, God has a wonderful plan for your life and God loves you and all this and all that. But they're never told the truth of the gospel. And that's that's the danger about these charismatic churches. Again, I don't hate them. I don't dislike them. But it's dangerous when we are putting emotion. It's dangerous when we're putting um, uh, experience over scripture. Again, because I was like this when I was in the emotion, I was in my emotions and in my feelings, everything I sought for, uh, I, I sought for dreams, I sought for visions, I sought for signs. So when I prayed to God for confirmation uh, for something, I could see three cows in a row and be like, oh, God is speaking to me. Three equals confirmation. So that means yes. So that means I should do it because God is leading me. He's speaking through the cows. Do you understand how a ridiculous and crazy that sounds? That's because I, I didn't know scripture. I was biblically illiterate, so I sought for signs. I was always looking and, and, and walking in the in the supernatural and, and all these type of things, you know, and uh, also uh, depending on dreams and visions for God to speak to me. When the truth of the matter is, a lot of these dreams that I had weren't dreams from God. They were of my own imagination because I would go to bed pondering on these things, thinking about them all day. So when I went to sleep, I would have them and then think they were from the Lord. This is why when we go back to the Old Testament, these prophets, they, they made false prophecies. They prophesied according to their own vain imaginations, right? So I can only uh, guess that when these false prophets would speak, they would go to bed thinking about the things that they wanted, that their flesh wanted, that what they wanted to be true. And they went to bed and had these dreams. They thought that these dreams uh, were from God and they would go and prophesy. But guess what? They weren't prophesying according to the Lord. They were prophesying by their own vain imaginations, what they saw, what they wanted, not what God wanted. And that's what's going on today. This is why you hear or oh, God told me to tell you and God said this and God said that. And like Sister April said, I'm, a, I'm going to put her um, her thing in, in the comment section. You guys can check her out. But this is why, you know, she said is that when people say God said or God told me to tell you and God said this and God said that it's hard to put a measuring stick or it's hard to 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 put something up to that to test it because it's like, oh, if he said God said then I better not question it because I'm questioning the man of God and I'm questioning the man of God Then I'm questioning God himself. So people don't, people don't try to test it at all. They just let it go, right? So 
I want this man to, to, to understand. And I have a scripture, um, my phone, not my phone, uh, my laptop fell asleep, right? Um, hold on. Because this is, this is what we have to understand when it comes down to salvation. Salvation is not by signs and wonders and all these things. And this is, and that's the scripture that they use. Hey, these signs shall follow them and they shall speak in tongues and cast out demons, right? So then what do these, a lot of these people in these charismatic churches say? Uh, well, uh, we're, 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 uh, we're casting out demons. We're speaking and we're doing signs, miracles, and wonders. What your church is doing? People are getting saved because they're seeing miracles. Miracles do not save people. I, I want I want y'all to understand that. Uh, miracles do not save people. So what they do, oh, we get people saved in church because they see us speaking in tongues and we cast out demons and people are getting healed, saved, and delivered. And the Bible said these signs shall follow us. And like, no, no, the gospel is what saves. The gospel is what saves signs miracles and wonders do not save people see people understood when it came in context when it came on the book of acts the in the book of acts the signs miracles and wonders were not done and for for guys like y'all gonna do this this that this and these type of miracles and they're gonna get saved the signs miracles and wonders done by the apostles were to affirm the speaker they were to affirm the gospel and to affirm christ Right. So the signs, miracles and wonders done by the apostles always pointed back to the gospel to verify it, to affirm it, to let the hearers know that this person is indeed of God. This person is in true preaching the true Jesus, preaching the true gospel. He is of Christ, the Messiah. Then they would get saved. Signs, miracles, and wonders were not done to say, oh, I seen a sign here. I seen them doing this. I seen them uh, speaking in tongues and, and uh, casting out demons. I believe in that. Look at that. that. That's real to me. And they had an experience. But to them, oh, that's real. Look at them. He's on the floor. and He's doing this. Oh, I be that's the power of God. I believe I want to get saved. But where was the gospel being preached? Where were you told that you were a sinner? Where were you told that you need uh, uh, that you need salvation, that you need to repent? They need to turn from your sins. And that. By the infilling of the Holy Spirit, God will sanctify you and bring you on a sanctifying process. What were you told that you need to, to, to turn, to have a change of mind, to have a change of heart, right? Romans 10 and 14 says, how then shall they call on him in whom they shall not believe? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How can a person truly know about Christ Jesus, the Messiah, when the gospel is not preached? And how can they preach without a preacher? You people do not get saved because they seen a person get uh, a demon cast out of them or because they were drunk in the spirit or because somebody put their hands on their head, blowing them and they fell out and they were emotional and crying. And the people are playing the instrumentals and everybody's in a, a, a emotional euphoria, emotional frenzy. Ooh, da, ba, ba. Like, no. And I'm, I'm not I'm not mad, but I'm getting passionate about this because there are people who I believe there are one that they, they truly love God and they're just. They're just ignorant of the scriptures, but I believe they're truly saved. Like, uh, for me, I, I, like, I truly got saved, but then I ended up falling into that emotional, you know what I'm saying? Like I truly accepted Christ, but I fell into that emotional eu euphoria, right? So I was biblically illiterate, but I wouldn't say I was a false convert, but there are people who are just, they don't know the Bible. They don't know Christ. They don't know scripture at all. And they're reason for salvation is based off experience of what they felt when they first went to church, what they felt when they first seen somebody fall out and get a demon casted out of them. But it's like, was the gospel preached? You seen people fall out. You seen people uh, slob and spit, but then you decided to come to the altar to accept Christ. But why are you accepting Christ? What was preached to you to know that Christ the Messiah died for you? You get what I'm saying? So, it's not a bash, man. It's not a bash. It's not a hatred on, on anyone. But this is dangerous. Emotionalism is dangerous because it's emotion over scripture. It's what I feel. This is why Marcus Rogers says, you know, I feel, I feel, I feel, you know, this is what God is. You know, I feel that this is what God has pressed upon me. I feel we got to go back. This We got to test scripture. We got to people may not like it. People can call us or you a religious Pharisee. But the fact of the matter is, 
Uh, this is why we have the Holy Spirit, man. This is why we have the word of God to test these these type of things. Right. Here's another thing I want to get to. Um, I can't remember. Hold on, y'all. I think it's in a book of in uh in a book of Romans. I'm on my laptop. If I'm correct, it's in a book of Romans. Um, what is this? Hebrews one and one, right? Hebrews one and one. Uh oh, Hebrews one and one, right? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So it says in, 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 uh, the past God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in the last days, he spoke to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through uh, whom also he made the universe, right? The sun is a, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being sustaining all things by his powerful word. Right after he had provided purification for sins, he sat on the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he he became as much superior to the angels as a name he has inherited a supported to theirs. Right. So let's get straight to the point. We know in times past in the Old Testament, God spoke to the prophets. Right. He spoke to the prophets many times. He spoke to them in various ways. So God spoke in many type of uh, ways, many different instances. God spoke that was beyond their comprehension. But now my people, now my brothers and sisters, now God speaks to us by his word. I'm not saying God can't give you dreams. I'm not saying that God can't give you visions, right? I've had dreams from the Lord. Never had a vision, but I've had dreams from the Lord. But in the times we were living in, notice it said in the last days, if I'm correct, the last days started, the last day started when Christ ascended back into heaven, right? If I'm correct, that's when the last day started. In the last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So right now, God speak to us primarily by his word, by the scriptures. So when people saying God told me to tell you, God said this, God said that I got a fresh new revelation. When you say I have a fresh new revelation and you're all in your emotions and you got people believe in this crap. What you're saying is that the Bible is still open. What you're saying is that the canon is still open. We got to understand that the canon is closed. The canon is closed. There's nothing else that can be added to uh, the Bible. There is no more fresh new revelation, but there is, I believe, um, illumination where the Holy Spirit illuminates truth to what's already been written because this is the revealed word. This is the revelation right here, the revealed word of God written for us that God has uh, that God has sustained for all these years. And now we have it in our hands, in our own, uh, in a, a book on laptops, in our phones, with Bible apps, the word of God has been sustained even now. But this is what we have to, we have to test what people are saying. We cannot get caught up in our emotions and believe what people are saying because people will take one piece of scripture out of a whole entire context and spin that around for their own uses to get you into your emotions, to get you into into crying and make it sound like they're prophesying and talking to you when they're not doing a hill of beans, man. So I'm heading on 20 minutes. Uh, like I didn't want to make this long, but again, man, we, we don't, don't be upset. Don't feel down when people call you some type of heresy hunter. When people think you're, you're hating, you're a hater. You're just jealous because he's produced, they're producing more fruit and they're doing this and they're doing that. You do what God has called you to do. And God has called us to test these type of people. How do we test it? We test it with the word of God. Why? Because the word of God is the final authority. If you're a true born again believer filled with the part of the Holy Spirit, we test everything with the word of God. And if people do not agree with that, then you have to quit wondering, are you saved? Are you truly saved? Amen. So that's it for me, man. But I love y'all. Stay safe. Going in uh, to uh, a new year, man. I don't know what God has planned. But let's continue to stay faithful. Let's continue to uh, stay in our word. Keep this thing pushing, man. We're going to keep on to keep on. All right. Peace.